Good day and welcome to Basic Tech. The concept of energy and power is one that, when understood properly, help you. It will help you navigate your way and be able to utilize energy in very wise ways within your environment. So let's get right away to it. By the end of this class, you should be able to define energy and state two sources of energy. You should be able to at least state five forms of energy and carry out simple calculations involving electrical energy. You should be able to define power and carry out simple calculations involving mechanical power. And lastly, you should be able to solve problems involving electrical power. So what is energy? Energy can be defined as the ability to work. It's an ability and it rests in every object. It's resting in you. The ability lies in everybody, in objects, still objects, moving objects. So work is done when a force is applied to an object such that the object moves through a distance. So once force is applied through a, an object to move it, no matter the distance, work has been done. And the unit of energy is joules. That is Newton per meter. So we use capital J to represent joules. Sources of energy. Now there are two broad classes of sources of energy, which are renewable sources of energy and non-renewable sources of energy. What is the difference? Renewable sources of energy cannot be exhausted. That is, in nature, it can never finish. In other words, you can use them up. Energy forms like solar, wind, hydro, and so on and so forth. They exist in nature and are always available for man to explore. While non-renewable sources of energy are the ones that get exhausted with time. So they, they get burnt up and are converted from one form to another. So they include energy forms like petroleum fuels, liquefied natural gas, solid fuel, like firewood, grass, and so on and so forth. So understand the difference. One is exhaustible while the other one is inexhaustible. Okay, here are several forms of energy. Forms of energy, that is, the form in which energy exists in nature. We have chemical energy. These are stored in food, petrol, natural gas, and can be converted from one form of another. So the energy in food is the reason why when you eat, you receive strength or you have strength, you're re-energized to do work. So because of the food you've eaten, the chemicals in the food actually have been converted to energy in another form of energy to help you do work. Next, we have electrical energy. This is the energy stored or used in powering electrical appliances at homes. It is obtained from electric current flowing in a circuit. So once you put on your switch, there is a flow of energy from to, to your device, from your power source to the device be it your TV, your home theater, your phones, or whatever device you're using. That form of energy that powers your TV is electrical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy experienced by a body undergoing motion. It combines both the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Potential energy is the energy the body possesses when it's at rest. In other words, when you're sitting in one place, you have potential energy. But once you start moving, or once an object starts moving, it possesses kinetic energy. Heat energy is obtained when fuel is burnt. When kerosene or petrol burns, it produces heat energy, which can be used to cook and power our food and power our vehicles. Sound energy is produced from loudspeakers when electrical energy is converted into sound energy. Usually sound energy exists in waveforms, in waveforms. Solar energy is the energy reaching us from the sun. It also, it also exists 
in the waveforms, that is, as light rays. This energy is responsible for our food, drying of our clothes, and the production of solar electricity. I'd also like to make you or inform you that this energy is what plants use to produce food. So without that energy, plants cannot manufacture food. And lastly, we have light energy. This is the energy produced by light bulbs or torch lights. So here are energy formulas for, we, for us to use in solving questions that relate to energy. The first is potential energy, PE. When you're asked to find the potential energy in a question, you simply use MGH, which is mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity multiplied by height. If we're asked to solve for kinetic energy, which is KE, you simply employ the formula half mv squared, which is half multiplied by mass multiplied by velocity of the moving object. And lastly, energy in a spring, ES. You can actually get the energy in a spring by using the formula half ke squared is similar to the kinetic energy. Where k in this case is the spring constant, you will be given that in the question, and e is the distance the spring is stretched or compressed. So here are three questions and examples that we're going to be taking quickly. What is the energy consumed by a refrigerator of 6 amperes and takes 12 volts to operate for about 5 seconds? If you notice, we've been given electrical parameters, which are 6 amperes, 12 volts. So here, we're going to be looking for electrical energy. Where electrical energy is given as I multiplied by V multiplied by T, that is current times voltage times time. So when we substitute the values of current as 6 amperes, voltage as 12 volts, and time as 5 seconds, we get 360 joules. The second example says, find the energy of a body of mass, 12 kg, which travels at a velocity of 5 meters per second. Since the body is traveling, we can conclude actually that we're looking for kinetic energy. Remember, the body is moving. So the formula for kinetic energy is half mv squared. So we substitute m, we substitute 12 in place of m, we put 5 in place of v. So punching that on your calculator, we have 150 joules as the kinetic energy of that body. And a third example says a car parked at a mechanic workshop has a mass of 30 kg and stands at a height of 120 meters from the ground. Find the energy the car possesses if the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second square. So since the car is parked, we can mean that can mean that we're actually looking for the potential energy. So in this case, PE is going to be yes, MGH. So we substitute the values of M, which is 30 kg, G, which is 10, and H, which is 120. So when we do that math carefully, we have 36,000 joules as the potential energy of the body, or 36 kilojoules. Now, to the concept of power. In physics, power can be defined as the rate at which work is done. And once you see rate, just know that time is involved. So it's simply work over time. The unit of power is watts, so without energy, no work is done. Remember, we need energy to work. So if there's no energy, no work is done. Mathematically, we say work is equal to force times distance. Therefore, power is force times distance over time. Remember, I said power is work over time. Where F is force, 
D is the distance moved by the load and T the time taken for the work to be done. So here are two quick examples. A crane is designed to lift a load of 60 kg through a distance of 10 meters. If the time taken for the work to be done is 20 seconds, calculate the power used by the crane. So we're going to take acceleration due to gravity, which is g, as 10 meter per second squared. Remember, power is f multiplied by d all over t. So we put f, and f is mass times acceleration due to gravity. Always note that, that your force must be given in newtons. If it's mass, mass is given in kilogram. But force is given in newtons. So we multiply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity to get the force, which is 60 times 10. That gives us 600 newton. So P is F multiplied by D all divided by 20, which is 600 multiplied by 10 all divided by 20. It gives us 300 watts. That is the power, the mechanical power for that crane. Now, the next question says, an electrical motor was made to drive a pump rated to 25 amperes from a 40, 480 volt source. Calculate the power rating of that pump. So above you see three equations that have been given in cases where we have to look for electrical power. P is power, V is voltage, R is resistance, and I is current. So depending on the question, if you are given any of those parameters, you can apply any of these equations, either equation A, equation B, or equation C, depending on the question. In this case, I is given, V is given, we have to look for P. And we know that P is equal to V multiplied by I, which gives us 25 times 480. So therefore, power is going to be 12,000 watts or 12 kilowatt. I want to believe that you have learned how to define energy as the ability to do work you should also be reminded that renewable there are two sources of energy which are renewable energy and non-renewable energy we've also learned to know the various forms of energy and do simple calculations involving energy we've also learned that power is the rate at which work is done We've learned one of two things about solving mechanical and electrical power. So please go through those questions as a means of revision. Send your answers to the email. Thank you for being in this class. I hope to see you again.